Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Toad Show and joined once again by your regular contributor Tom Malone. Tom, welcome. Thanks again, Thanks again for, for joining us. So we started with a review of Punchestown last week for many people ready to kick off the national hunt season in earnest in Ireland and Tom, some real standout performances last week. Uh, Sam Crow for me, definitely one of the performances of the week. Petit Bouchoir, um, Gordon Elliott, six-timer, a lot to talk about. Yeah, lots. Look, Sam Crow is already a single figure prize for the Neptune, and you can see why, you know, the, his bump performance last year was absolutely excellent. He's, he's just won in places for that. Yeah, for it's, that it's a bit tight, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit tight, considering he hasn't really done anything of note yet. Between, uh, Petit Bouchoir, for me, was really interesting in recent weeks as well. You know, streets clear of hell. Mm. Um, and you know, what a 162 horse over, over hurdles looks like could be getting close to that as well. The fence, and I'm really excited. Seven or eight to one for the arc of all the moment is that a small bit tight. I mean, that's yeah, it's a, it's a same, it's an honest chase, it's six months away. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I look, that's I think a lot of anti post quotes are. For pure yeah. purposes, not betting purposes at the moment, and you definitely follow the team sure to that. And the same with Campy or the Crows, and sort of trying to set up for a champion hurdle. Uh, can't have him uh, for that as well. The very impressive performance by Campy Dorr. Um, I just don't think he's uh, a champion hurdle horse not yet. Well. And given what his owner has as well, Deputy De Soy and Bogart there, I, I, can't, I can't see him doing it. Uh, interesting quotes from Barry Garrity. I was tracing talking about his fall in the Fred Winter. said he was the fall probably flattered him. If anything, because he, he felt his own had actually petered out at that stage. So, um, can't be a no from me. Um, cracking smart one that was a really good like really good, yeah, really, yeah. Like really solid bump. I just noted in his race comments, well, he got, he got pretty carried away. So, just no handling it's carry away. <laughs> That's a really good, good sign yeah. for me as well. So, if we look then at Champions Day at Ascot last Saturday, six phenomenal mm -hmm. new Champions Day, particularly likes of persuasive women in the QE2. I mean, is she the best minor? No, no, it's absolutely not. not and uh, one of John Gosling's interesting post post race as well, saying that just at this time of year, uh, fillies can have a bit of a better chance. They're less distracted than the male counterpart. So I always bear that in mind, which probably adds to the cracks in case even further. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's very impressive. The drop back to ten, no problem to it at all. Poorly on at the end, and uh, look very excited. Next Currently, year. the sectionals that cracks have put in for the last. Number of furlongs were phenomenal, even faster than the recent threes in the sprint area on the card. To be fair, that sprint didn't look very sprinty. <laughs> <Did it? laughs> no, I mean, look, the recent threes being a group one sprint would I'd be a, pretty, a negative for me now. Mm. You know, Valley Doyle did what they did with Harry's Angel. They a very strange, very strange race. Was it? Yeah, I meant to Why he dropped him in uh, and then he just fought with the horse for a furlong, and, mm. and that was that was it. Like you know what I mean? He actually ran admirably to finish the last race, given the given the early stages. Uh, slight disappointment for Caravaggio, but at the end he looked like a seven furlong. He did, he didn't he? Or maybe one for the Regis Cup mile. They should have gone instead of going down that route. Possibly so. Yeah. Uh, so we have a look at maybe this weekend's racing. We have Leopardstown, of course with the fully tote sponsored day on Saturday with the tote October handicap and we also have Galway and Wexford. Anything in particular to give for you Tom? Uh, a couple at uh, Leopardstown in the uh, the listed race. One night I dream would definitely have his ground. Maybe silver code. I, I just love silver code but I, so think, I, think maybe, just, I think I think maybe the time of year has, has been in past for him mm. look more of a summer horse. Um, Saracen Knight in the group three uh, looked like a horse that will relish a step up to nine furlongs. Uh, and two in the Phillies nursery. Uh, one that won yesterday at Fairy I I was there at Fairy House <laughs> yesterday. Probably didn't need a microphone, could have called out for the parade to chat. But uh, look, Rinka Darren had won off a mark in like the 50, so it's going to get a penalty mm -hmm. for that. But like she actually looked a shade under, but looked great in the parade ring. So just as soon as she won five lengths, uh, as soon as the sore wins it, well, she, she'll definitely win another nursery next time out. She's in at the weekend. She, she'll she carry like 7-7 seven, seven or something. But, you know, these kind of upsets can happen at this time of year. A lot of dealers are potentially overcooked. Uh, maybe my silver nails, but mm. I'm very disappointed that's what Yeah, Rinka Dermot, I uh, looked one. And then in the total October handicap, uh, I've got a bit countdown on this. One from the top and one from the bottom. Uh, Moani, who definitely deserves to win a Premier Handicap. Has been excellent all season, steps up a couple of furlongs as well. I've just been touched up by Panstar, the car, uh, on the last day of the season there. And Western Boy, another one, he's a really consistent sort. Um, 
he did run the greatest of races last time out, but uh, he certainly wasn't knocked about or beaten. And uh, I've always thought, who won the Tingo handicap two years ago? He's always one of those horses that there's a, a decent big day in him, and he actually got dropped a couple of times as well. So, yeah, Moani from the top and Western Boy from the bottom. I'm pretty much like you, Tom, one from the top and one from the bottom. In the top October handicap, I do prefer for the October handicap horses towards the top, maybe mid 80s to early 90s rated. And I do like Moani as well. Um, Possibly Tudor City for Tony Martin. Yeah. He's off a nice mark there of, of 86. So, final declarations will be in. Um, and I hope you're on half past 10 in the morning. So, we'll see them lose. <laughs> so, on Saturday, of course, across the water, we have the final Group 1 race on the flat in Britain uh, with the Racing Post Trophy Tom. Um, and almost half the field is either Aidan O'Brien and Jim Bulger. So, Saxon Warrior, that absolutely impeccably bred by Deep Impact and maybe. Currently around six to four, very, very short for me on what he's achieved so far. Yeah, he is a little bit short, but I would always, you know, Ender Martin hasn't won this since Camelot won it, actually. Yeah. You know, it's been the Andrea Zaini race for the last few years, and he rides chilly and he looks a very impressive sword for Martin Mead. Um, Saxon Wire, they couldn't really hide their, you know, joy mm. in the performance of Saxon Wire at Nace that day. I mean, the ground was soft and he just. He kept plugging through yeah. it, no problem. Uh, it's quite a high knee action, so you think uh, you're well able to get a soft ground at Doncaster. It looks like Hugh Gardens, who we, we spoke about off air, actually came from that race and won a listed race at Newmar yeah. to give it a bit of a solid look. Form yeah, uh, and uh, you know, Hugh Gardens' form would be relatively closely matched with a couple of those um, sort of lower down the lower down the field and the ground. It's definitely progressive, and uh, that's true. Yeah, it's yeah. Like yeah. five or something. Um, so it isn't actually the greatest driver mm -hmm. trial these days, more of a ledger trial really. Um, but look, yeah, Saxon Moore is a, a proper favourite. Are you going to stay I think, I think you know who are doing <laughs> verbal dexterity for me. And it, it's purely, he's a, he's a proven grade one winner. I mean, he was very, very impressive at the, at the Curra. And on a line of form through uh, Rizan yes. and Lethal Steps, verbal dexterity more than has the beating of Saxon Warrior. I just think there's a huge disparity in the prices here. I mean, six to four, Saxon Warrior has it to prove a group one level versus verbal dexterity around seven to two or four. Yeah, do, I don't do know what price. Like, yeah, absolutely. Look, okay, you couldn't not um, state the case of the Pentagon as well. That's true. The Pentagon is an incredibly stoutly bred horse. Yes. <laughs> this is a tough there. For yes, two year olds, a mile at this time of the year, really, really and, tough. And it, can, and it can bottom them out. You know, yeah. That's why, it's probably why you're not seeing that many job winners come out of it. But yeah, look, the Pentagon is an absolutely screaming chance. Roar and Line looked like he there's lots more improvement in there as well, to be fair, um, after his performance the last day. But look, I think Saxon Warrior might be very, very special. Yeah. Um, just, I was there at Nace that day and he just did it so easily. Mm. I, I was actually surprised looking back, when just was actually only two and a half lengths, and I just remember thinking, surely it was, it was more like, it felt more like five. Mm. Yeah, it's different. Nice and of course, course just the old saying, you breed the best with the best and hope for the best. Yeah. I mean, then you couldn't get no, no. more blue blood than this is an exceptional breeding and looks at, looks a proper, proper race horse. I'm looking forward to a very good race on, on Saturday, to be honest. And speaking of uh, looking forward to good races, of course, next week we have the Breeders' Cup and we have the pre-entries in yesterday for all of the, the Breeders' Cup races. It looks like Bally Doyle will have as many as 19 runners. Um, absolutely phenomenal. They're favoured in four of the races yeah, already. Yeah, it's... It is intriguing, isn't it? Um, the news are going to bring Churchill. That interests me just because the horse that Aidan O'Brien has compared Churchill to most often, uh, and Tom Curry speaking, is Giants Causeway, yeah. who, you know, of course, right, close so yeah. close was at 2000. Um, so, yeah, that would, that would be a, a little positive for me. Look, Roly Poly, you'd like to think that she could, just being by work, but she could perhaps mm. do something. Um, look, Lady Arabia is going to be 6 to 4 in the Church Sprint. That looks a bit of a gift for us to be yeah. perfectly honest given you know any trouble Lady Rudy will find is late in the race so she should have been able to play <laughs> quite honestly before we get to next week and we'll probably have a preview hopefully next week very early in the week for me I cannot believe that Lady Rudy is not a lot odds on at this stage I yeah. cannot see a single horse getting within two or three lengths of her around Del Mar because it's such a sweeping turn it's only a furlong and a half in the street and should be gone before yeah it should be gone before yeah and yeah. even like the others will have to change the legs by the time they change the legs it should be yeah. 
you know, they'll be waving at the crowd. That's it. Uh, Ulysses is another sort of obvious European chance. There, you know? Very definitely, yeah. The, the way the race will be run, particularly on the Tour of Del Mar next week, will suit Ulysses down to the ground. He can just sit in behind him, stalk him, use that turn of foot over the 12 or Yeah, absolutely. And you know, he swore the Champions League to get a bit. Yeah. Kind of, you know, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a relatively. If Churchill player. does run in the Classic, it's his first preference. His second preference is for a mile. You give him any chance in the Classic. Well, I have to show you about this. Apparently, his, his natural speed, so he could actually get a problem of position, mm. then coast along for a little bit. Once they get to the turn, if he can get them off it, he might just you know, yeah. use his stamina to get home. So the race could actually run to suit him, mm. just because, like I said, he has such natural speed to get into position. The time when he potentially hits a flat spot in the race, they're turning anyway, and he might be in front, so it might not actually be a problem. And then by the time they come to him, once he gets out of the turn, he yeah. should be able to back along to the line. Yeah. You know? And it looks like a fantastic race. Always one of the my favourite races of the entire year. Uh, for me, the, the American three-year-olds aren't up to much this year. Yeah. Uh, I'm fairly the camp of the four-year-olds are getting them, particularly Gunrunner, who I reckon is the best I think it's, it's bit, The track will be tricky for him. Though, Absolutely. He's been beaten both times at Del Mar. And he's such a long striding horse. Yeah. He needs time. I think that's actually... When he won last year, when he beat uh, California Chrome, only had that the length of the straight for him to get to California Chrome, it just wouldn't have happened. Yeah, and, and that won't happen until I don't, don't think so. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think I think Gunnar is as solid a favourite as you'll see um, for the week. So, once again, thank you very much for watching, and thanks to my guest Tom Alon thank for, you. for, nice for all your contributions and the very best of luck with all your bets this weekend uh, at Leopardstown and Galway and Wexford, and we'll be back next week for the Breeders' Cup.